Ladies and gentlemen, we're just ready to start sec session two of the ICANN conference. We welcome you. It's my privilege to be able to uh, MC this session of, of the meeting. Uh, I'm Ken Wise, and uh, we look forward to uh, five really outstanding papers from five really outstanding speakers this afternoon. Uh, but before we get into the technical presentations, uh, Stephanie Albin from the Kavli, Inst Kavli Foundation uh, is going to make a few welcoming, re welcoming remarks. So, Stephanie, it's yours. Thank you. um, yeah, so thank you uh, to the organizers for inviting me to this wonderful meeting and giving me the opportunity to say just a few um, brief remarks. Um, so, as Ken said, <coughs> I am. Um, uh, with the Kavli Foundation. I'm a science program officer there. If you're not familiar with the Kavli Foundation, we're a private philanthropy, and we are dedicating, dedicated to advancing science for the benefit of humanity, promoting public understanding of science and the role of scientific research, and supporting scientists and their work. Uh, we focus mainly on the fields of astrophysics, nanoscience, and of course, neuroscience. And we carry out our mission um, through an international program of endowed research institutes, the Kavli Prize, which is award awarded every two years, um, scientific meetings, and other pilots and initiatives. Um, one of the initiatives that we um, are a stakeholder in would be one that I think you've heard of, which is the U.S. Brain Initiative. So I'm not going to go through the history of the U.S. Brain Initiative, but suffice it to say that Kavli um, was really instrumental in the development of this initiative, and we are still a very active partner in this uh, public-private partnership that is the U.S. Brain Initiative. So brain disorders are a leading source of disease, um, of disease burden and cost in the U.S. and around the world, um, and that's why the Brain Initiative is really seeking to revolutionize our understanding of the brain through advancing innovative neurotechnologies. The U.S. Brain Initiative was one of Obama, the Obama administration's grand challenges. So it was launched in 2013, and it continues, I'm happy to say, have strong bipartisan support from Congress. Uh, the focus of the first phase of the Brain Initiative really emphasized technology development. So to support the development of these innovative neurotechnologies to create a dynamic understanding of brain function, which will ultimately help us understand brain disorders. Um, the second phase of the brain initiative, oops, which we are entering in right now, is going to emphasize uh, more discovery-driven science. Um, I think this is now where sort of the, I guess the bottleneck is a little bit. It's making sure that all the technology that's been developed and is currently still being developed um, is disseminated into the hands of the researchers to really have the biggest impact possible. Um, if you're interested in numbers, I did recently learn that for, uh, at least for the NIH alone, uh, total brain initiative funding through 2025 is estimated to be $4.9 billion. Uh, which is huge. And through 2017, so the first five years, they've only spent 11% of that. So I think there's still a lot more, um, I guess, funding to come. So um, the US it does not have the only brain initiative uh, in the world. There are large scale brain projects in Europe, Japan, China, Israel, Korea, um, and so forth. In early December 2017, at a meeting hosted by the Australian Academy of Science uh, called Brains at the Dome, a number of the world's uh, major brain projects were there, and they made a formal declaration of intent to establish an international brain initiative. Um, so I'm not going to read the whole quote from this declaration, but I think it was amazing that, first of all, you got all these countries to agree on something, but that they agreed that no single initiative would be able to tackle the challenge to you know, ultimately understand the brain. Um, Kavli is continuing in its role as a facilitator and is helping organize a series of international brain initiative meetings, uh, including one that's taking place later this week in Korea. 
So the International Brain Initiative is still in the early stages of figuring out how to work together and is building a network of working groups um, to help tackle the projects you know, and questions that are of interest to the global neuroscience community. So here are six of these working groups um, that are in various stages of development. Um, and if you're interested in a particular topic, I'm happy to speak more about it uh, offline. So one of the ones that is the furthest developed is this idea of creating an inventory of global brain projects. So the idea is to have a comprehensive um, inventory that includes things like the mission, the duration, funding, deliverables, um, and that this inventory will then be analyzed for areas of potential synergy and collaboration, but also for gaps and missed opportunities. Um, and the NSF recently awarded Melina Hale from the University of Chicago and Patrick Hoff from Mount Sinai um, an award to organize a scientist workshop to help set up the framework for what this inventory will be. Um, another working group that is making some progress slowly is neuroethics. So prior to the International Brain Initiative, there already was a global neuroethics summit in 2017 in Korea, and there will be another one next year. Um, they are tackling sort of the question of neuroethics and are trying to create a universal list of questions, neuroethics questions, to, that would serve, I guess, sort of as a tool for the world's brain projects, to sort of be proactive and make them aware of some of the neuroethic questions that um, are starting to arise. Um, I guess the last working group I just want to briefly touch on, because not uh, a whole lot has actually been done yet, would be um, tool and technology dissemination. So I think this is something that you guys are probably um, pretty interested in. Um, it's especially of interest, as I said, to the U.S. Brain Initiative as they're moving from this technology development phase to the discovery-driven science stage. Um, so Cavalry is trying to help uh, foster a dialogue to sort of fill this gap and assist the scientific community in tackling the issue of tool dissemination. So one thing that we are doing is funding an annual meeting that started last fall on the topic of open neurotechnology and tool dissemination. Um, this year, we're hoping to push that effort forward in more concrete ways and come up with uh, some sort of white paper outlining the existing paths for tool and technology dissemination and new paths. Um, we also, with our various partners, attend scientific meetings to engage directly with the scientific community. So this is where we've recently been. Um, we will be in Berlin this summer for FENS as well as SFN. Um, and at these meetings, we hope to sort of directly engage with the scientific community and get your you know, thoughts and ideas for you know, what the International Brain Initiative should be and how it would be useful to you. So I guess that would be sort of my call to action. Um, if you have any ideas for tool and technology dissemination or any of the other International Brain Initiative working groups, um, please you know, find me or email me. There's my email address because you know, your input is welcome and valuable to the International Brain Initiative. So thank you. And now, on to the science. <laughs>